fire is still growing, Monty, and firefighters are working to cut containment lines, especially towards the north, and move the fire into any bodies of water they can to stop it from growing and keep those structures safe. In the meantime, in some portions where the fire has already moved through, especially the southern portion near where the fire first started up, damage assessment teams have been able to go through. They said they're about 50% done with their work, at least from what they expect so far, and 632 structures have we know been destroyed more on top of that damage. Although some of the firefighters who were just down the road from here trying to stop the creek fire now know that their homes are on that list of destroyed structures. Right now, a lot of us are wondering, you know, do we even rebuild? I mean, if you look around at the ground, you know, are these trees going to come back? Ground cover will come back, but, you know, uh, what's it going to take? What's it going to take? The Pine Ridge Volunteer Fire Department has 15 firefighters and six people on what's called the Quad Squad. Of those 21 people, only three have homes still standing. Uh, one of the chiefs said it came through this whole community in about 30 minutes. James Parr is the chief of the Pine Ridge Volunteer Fire Department and assistant chief of the Shaver Lake Volunteer Fire Department. He and his wife lost their homes to the Creek Fire. Another volunteer with Shaver Lake lost his home as well. And Again. not everyone has insurance. Uh, the company that's writing for us uh, doubled the price uh, two years ago and then tripled it again last year. Um, so that honestly, that prices a lot of people out. Uh, we were able to, to keep insurance, knock on wood. Pine Ridge also lost two fire engines. Chief Parr thinks it must have taken 1,000 plus degree heat to leave it like this. Crews are working to clear the roads, getting power lines and burnt trees out of the way. But Chief Parr thinks it'll be a while before people are allowed up here. So, um, the yeah. homeowners yeah. have been saying, oh, I want to come up and, you know, take a look and, you know, grab my photo album or something like that. And it's like, it's very hard, it, not, not just to explain it to them, but it's very hard emotionally for both of us to, to tell them that you don't have a photo album, right? Your, your storage shed where you keep that is just as, just as destroyed as your house. Um, and uh, you, you can't come up this week. You can't come up next week, probably. It's probably going to be a long time. It's just hazardous up here. This is a map of the evacuation zones, and there are firefighters standing by to make sure that any homes within these areas that are still standing stay that way. As Monty mentioned a couple minutes ago, there are some areas that have their evacuation orders now decreased to evacuation warnings, but for the areas that are still under mandates, the chief thinks that it's probably going to be a while, maybe even a couple weeks before people are allowed back into those areas because of all the dangers, the downed trees, power lines, fires that are still sparking up ash that is toxic, lots of hazards that he mentioned. Monty. All right, Marie, stay safe. And if you'd like to donate to help the firefighters in Shaver Lake and Pine Ridge, you can find a link to their GoFundMe page. It's on our website, kmph.com. We also have an article up online explaining what donations are needed and where you can drop them off.